Welcome to the Medical Ancillary Sales Podcast, your number one source for making money in the medical ancillary sector. Mike and Viv bring you the latest information from lab services, pharmacy, diagnostic testing, and so much more. The latest in ancillary services will be right around the corner. Welcoming the hosts of the Medical Ancillary Sales Podcast, here's Mike and Viv. Hello and welcome to the Medical Ancillary Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Berg, and joined as always by Viv Hudson. How are you, Viv? I'm great, thanks, Mike. And today it's a little bit different because we don't just have one special guest, we have two. So I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce them. Yeah, so today we have on two people from Ally Medical. We have Stephanie Shaw and Robert Blitzstein. I got it right, right, Rob? Got it. Got it. <laughs> and today we, um, Robert and Stephanie are here to talk to us about their allergy program. And as you guys know, we, we already offer a couple allergy programs, but allergy is always a hot topic with physicians. It seems that most physicians know that that's an avenue that, that still generates a good amount of money. Plus, it's, it's something that they can do to help their patients. A lot of patients suffer from allergies, and there's real solutions out there to, to cure those allergies through immunotherapy. But there's different programs that are out there that physicians can utilize to get that done. So, Robert and Stephanie, thank you for getting on. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Yep. Okay, so, so Stephanie, first off, can you, can you run through your program? Tell us about your program. Absolutely. So what Ally Medical specializes in is going into a physician's practice and setting up an allergy clinic in their space. We only require two things. One, that they have an exam room dedicated to allergy testing. And two, that they have a dedicated phone line in that room. We provide all of the immunotherapy, all the testing equipment, everything from soup to nuts to get an actual allergy facility going in their practice. There's no upfront cost for the doctor. Um, We hire an allergy technician that we train. We spend about $5,000 per allergy tech and getting them up to speed so that they are an expert in their field. And there are several things that set us apart. One is we don't put any restrictions on the physician as to volume. So if they test one patient a week or 50 patients a week, that's great. We will, we will definitely um, listen to what their needs are and adapt to that. Um, the second thing is, is we create a patient-specific immunotherapy. So, Viv, if you're allergic to dogs, cats, and horses, you're going to get an immunotherapy that's just dogs, cats, and horses as to not tax your immune system with giving you 40 other things in your immunotherapy. And last, we do a region-specific test for the physician. So, for example, if you live in Kansas, you're not going to be... uh, you're not going to be coming in contact with palm trees very often unless you're on vacation. And so those are specifically created per region. And that's, that's pretty much it uh, as far as kind of a broad paintbrush. I know you all have worked with other allergy companies in the past. They're just a, a couple of things that set us apart, which I've identified. And Rob, I'll let you take over from here. Yeah, you know, one, one key point is we want to take our time with the practice. There is no rush here to, to build this model. And I think what we've seen with uh, past companies, there's been urgency, 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 and we respect the fact they're treating a patient and getting a patient the right, you know, the right you know, protocol, the right immunotherapy, but we're not going to rush this with the physician. And so you know, ultimately what ends up happening by saying, hey, there's no demands, we're going to build our comfort level, we're going to We're going to have a great questionnaire that's very in-depth. We're going to define eligibility for that patient to see where they stand with benefits, see if they can even get this covered by their insurance plan. But, you know, as we gain more momentum, 
you know, as a physician starts to see this, that this process works, they will start to want to uncover more and more patients. And I think, I think that's the key. We want to take our time. And, uh, you know, this is a process and, you know, everyone wants everything done yesterday, yesterday, but we want to make sure that we're in the pace of that practice. If that physician has experience and they're like, look, you know what, we're getting rid of company A to work with you guys. Well, that's completely different. They already have a, a system in place and they know the type of demand they're going to see on a daily basis. But typically speaking, a third of the United States is allergic. So you can equate that to a third of any given practice. But, you know, we're looking to uncover eventually that one to two uh, patients a day that really, I mean, not, that really need our help. We're, we're not saying we need that, but we're looking to help, help those patients. And that's what we've seen on a national level. So if you're looking at insurances, uh, is there any particular insurance that you target or uh, any particular state that is accepted? Well, Medicaid is the only thing that's really going to come into play, Vivian, um, when it comes to a state-by-state -state rules and regulations. Medicaid is really the only insurance that we have to identify which state allows allergy testing to be done by a primary care physician and which state does not. So those, those are our only, um, when it comes to insurance plans, the ones that we need to dive into. Other than that, we've had very good luck with, with uh, all commercial plans and Medicare. So there are no states that we need to stay away from, and there are no plans that we need to stay away from. So, yeah, one, go ahead. I'm Brad. sorry. I just want to say something about Medicare. It def, we definitely have to be very, very, um, you know, um, keep the... With a Medicare patient, we want to make sure it's an active patient, you know, the right Medicare patient, someone that's like, you know, they can't deal with their symptoms anymore. And even though they're 67, they're still very active. So we're looking for an active in that in that space. We're not talking about the geriatric patient profile. So um, when we talk about like insurance restrictions, if they're a dominant Medicare patient population and they're closer to the advanced, like, you know, geriatric age, probably not the best practice either for, for rule of thumb. But um, an active adult that's still playing golf, that wants to be interject with their grandkids, that's different. Uh, that And if, if the doctor sees it's medically relevant. So I just wanted to clarify that one at is, one point with Medicare. Is this all done in office or the treatments, can they be done at, at the patient's home? It is, it is completely up to the doctor's discretion. We have some doctors that are adamant that every patient come in and receive their injection. We have other doctors that are more lenient. Now, I do know with Medicare, those patients need to come in to the office to receive their injections. Um, and it's, again, based on the doctor's wishes, other than Medicare must come in once a week to receive their shots. Okay, so what, so how do you sell this? If I'm if I have a primary care physician that's open to to listening about allergy, how how are you selling the the program? Well, if if I can jump in here, Rob, and just throw out it's it the program sells itself. I mean, the first thing I say to my primary care physicians is, why are you letting at least two thousand dollars walk out your door on a daily basis if a, roughly fifty four percent of the population has expressed allergy symptoms? Why are you letting them walk out the door to an allergist or an ENT when you can keep those dollars underneath your roof and manage that practice, manage that patient's symptoms and overall well-being throughout the course of their allergy treatment? And right there, the doctor hears that and, and takes immediate interest because not only are we providing an additional revenue stream for the practice, we're providing great medicine where patients are experiencing benefits of being on the patient-specific immunotherapy after three or four months in some cases. It makes it real simple when the doctor has no um, financial uh, capital costs to start the program, and all they need to do is oversee the program. You know, they're not having to hire additional employees because we take that burden off of them. The only thing they're required to do is file that claim within 24 hours, which we assist them with, and run a report at the end of each month letting us know what they have billed out and what they've received back in reimbursement. Right. So you mentioned uh, before that you would supply a technician. So you have an office and they're only, testing, they're only doing one patient uh, a week, for example. 
would that be uh, would that still be a viable practice for you or how would you handle that situation well in that particular situation because we do grow organically in some cases we'll start with a, a, an employee that's only there one day a week maybe we start with a, an employee that's there three days a week knowing that that doctor is aggressive and has a practice that that can certainly feed patients into the allergy clinic um, if we the, the one that one employee seeing one patient one day a week, we know that's going to grow if it's being marketed right within the practice. What are the, you know, I, I mean, I just want to add to that. Yeah, just real quickly, once again, every practice has that, you know, if they're seeing 30 patients a day, there's going to be five to 10 patients a week that are really suffering that have not been able to find adequate, you know, uh, care, you know, outside for allergies, and they don't know what to do. So there's an allergy shortage nationally. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if they're only finding one uh, a week after, let's say, we don't have a time, we actually we don't have restrictions, but it's not the right practice. If after a couple of months, it's not, I don't think it's the right fit, you know, and that could happen too. You know, and that's, that's a thousand, but um, definitely, you, like Stephanie keeps on saying, the keyword organically you know, they have patients that are really suffering that will really benefit. And some patients don't want to go to a specialist. They'd rather stay within their PCP setting. So that's another point, too. What about the what about sublinguals? Can you do sublinguals? Sure, we absolutely can. That's not something that we actively market. Um, but we can create sublinguals um, for that doctor that has that specific patient that requires it. Yeah, occasionally we do get that request, but I know that insurance coverage is, is spotty at best with sublinguals, but you do have some patients that are that are willing to pay out of pocket because they don't want to take shots, and I can understand that. Exactly. So we do create uh, patient-specific sublingual immunotherapy for those specific cases. So we make that available, Mike, but we not don't necessarily promote it. So what is the process if we have a doctor who's interested? What are the next steps? So the next steps would be to, um, and I, I would assume I'm, I'm taking into consideration you all have already vetted the practice and you, you've visited with the doctor and you've talked to him about the revenue stream and how patients can benefit from being on patient-specific immunotherapy. The next step would be to fill out a new account form. Um, it would be to have them look at the physician staffing agreement uh, make sure they're comfortable with it. If they need to review it with their attorney, we welcome that. Get the, get that agreement signed. And then we send the questionnaire out. And they start handing those questionnaires out to every single person that walks in the office, whether they're filling out patient demographic information or signing HIPAA documents. Make sure that that patient is also getting an allergy questionnaire. So you start building up your allergy profile for the practice. And what is the um, time frame on that typically to get from start to finish till they're tested? Typically, it depends. Um, well, it takes us about um, – we get with our company that uh, supplies our, our, our immunotherapy and all of our testing equipment. It takes about two weeks to place an order. They work on the demographics and tell us exactly what we need to, to test in their, based on their region. And then supplies are ordered, and all this is done while we are – hiring a person for that location. What we do is we send the doctor three qualified candidates. We work with staffing agencies that have uh, the JS approval, meaning they go through background checks, criminal checks, drug screens, um, you name it. They are put through the rigmarole of, is this an employee I would want walking through my door? And so then we send them three candidates that we would hire and let the doctor make the final decision or the practice manager make the final decision since they will be working with that employee in their environment. Okay, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. If anybody has any questions, if you have any interested physicians, please reach out to myself, reach out to Vivian. We can get you all the materials and get you set up. So Robert and Stephanie, I want to thank you for joining us. All right, thanks so much. Thank you. Take care.